Hello everyone and welcome back to the core. We're going to be looking at patch 0.3.2 this time. Please keep in mind that according to the schedule that Omita laid out in the last patch, this will solely be a balanced patch. Larger content patches that include system updates, new heroes, and larger additions will be released every 4 weeks with smaller balanced patches every 2 weeks. So keep your expectations in check. The first change of the patch is an adjustment to the matchmaking changes that Omita made in the last one. To quote Omita, it's clear that we overshot a little bit on the party modifier. It's too aggressive and also had a larger impact on the top end of our MMR brackets than desired. Matchmaking is a complicated beast and we were bound to slip up sooner or later. We appreciate your patience and feedback when we missed the mark like this and hope the following changes improve the experience for all players. It's super refreshing to see a dev admit stuff like this and the transparency Omita has shown us in the last few weeks has made me extremely grateful for their continued focus on clear communication. Going forward, matches should be a little more balanced and while we might get slightly longer queue times because of it, the player base is growing at such a pace I don't see it becoming too much of a problem. Moving on, another one of the bigger changes in this patch is that fountain regen has been increased. I'm not too sure about this change to be honest. Between the jump pads and the relatively small size of the map, you're already able to get back to lane pretty quick after going back to base. This is going to make it even harder to punish poor back timings in game, because there already aren't too many inopportune moments to base if you feel the need. I think that being able to poke someone down to the point where they have to leave lane should be rewarded, and anything that makes it easier to nullify that reward is an overall negative for the game. Next, Omita explained a concept they call the S Factor. The way they worded it in the article is a little confusing, but basically it revolves around how much stats heroes get per level relative to their early game. They say in this patch, the changes will shift much of the stats gained by growth in-game to early game levels, mainly reflected in your health and mana. My interpretation of this is that it will reduce some level of snowballing based on level disparity, and even out the playing field early game if you fall behind. This will increase time to kill in the early game as well, which I don't think is really necessary. I think time to kill early hasn't really been a problem, but late game you get deleted if you aren't careful. Before we get into the hero changes, it's time for another quick fix request for Omita. So Omita. If you get a chance, can you add tonics to the recommended item build screen in the shop if someone is full build? The majority of people that I play with in solo queue still don't even know that they exist, and they are game changing late game. Raising awareness would be a nice quality of life change for people getting into the game. So now let's get into the hero changes. First up is Countess, who has been dominating with her tanky bruiser build. Her magical lifesteal per passive stack has been decreased, as well as healing on blade siphon. The healing scaling on Siphon has been increased though, so I don't think this is a hard enough nerf on her overall healing. The base damage on her E has been decreased as well, but once again the scaling has been increased. We'll have to wait and see how this affects her, but I think she'll still be hovering between A and S tiers. Spoiler alert, Fire Blossom has been nerfed as well, which we'll go into later in the patch. So that will definitely have an impact. Bang Mao has had its physical power scaling reduced both in general and specifically on his ultimate. His ultimate's execute penetration scaling is increased from 250 to 350, which is nice, I guess, but I still think Fang has been in a really rough spot for a while, and this does nothing to really help that. His ult was already the best part of his kit, and now the rest of his kit has been nerfed, so he's going to be in an even worse spot, especially before 6. I honestly think this change is going to force him out of the offlane, except in some very niche scenarios. Bay is getting a buff to her base health and the scaling on her Q, which is fine. Gideon's Q is getting some higher scaling, both his Q and E now cost more mana. This is fine, but personally I think even more mana dependency forces mages, especially Gideon, into rushing Azure Core at almost every game. Like I said in the last patch, that's boring. More mage items need mana so that we can have more build diversity back in the mid lane. Howie is getting his scaling buff to his Q, in line with changes made to other mages. Kalari is getting hit pretty hard. Both her starting attack speed and her attack speed growth have been decreased, which is a great change in my opinion. Her attack speed made her clear a little too fast and her ability to box early a little too strong. Also nerfed was her dagger scaling. Add to that a bug fix that solved a bug causing Deathmark to scale with more physical power than it should and Clary's DPS has really been hit. Clary's invisibility will always cement her as a pub stomper, but I don't think she was that strong of a hero outside of it, and this change might destroy her for a patch or two. I guess we'll see. Now, let's look at these Bellica buffs. Her knockup scaling has increased, and its cooldown has been decreased. The base damage and scaling for her drone has been buffed as well, putting Bellica in a much better spot than she has been. I still don't think that she's as impactful mid as other mages like Fey or Gadget, but with these changes, I think she's definitely able to keep up with them a lot easier. Murdoch's health growth has increased slightly, which is fine. I think Murdoch's in a pretty good spot at the moment, so I'm not sure how necessary this change was, but giving him more survivability can't hurt. Muriel's E has had its mana cost decrease. I think a lot of people were hoping for more substantial Muriel changes, but honestly I think she's underrated and can definitely be viable in the right hands. 
Right now, there's a lot of focus on CC in Pred, so until we start seeing diminishing returns on CC, I don't think she'll see much of the spotlight, but that doesn't mean she isn't still a good support. Speaking of good supports, these Narbash changes are definitely going to mean we see him a lot more. His base mana has been increased by a full hundred, and now he has 50% more mana regen. His mana growth has been lowered a bit to compensate, but these changes mean he can bust out more healing early with less worry about running Oom too quickly. His heal does use more mana early, but it heals more per second and has a lower cooldown late. Beat drop stacks per second has been doubled from 1 to 2, which is also a pretty substantial buff. Lastly, his thunk now costs 10 more mana, which doesn't really change too much. You might see a few less thunks in lane now, but with the healing buffs, thunks are no longer his main purpose early on in lane anyway. Revenant has seen a lot of changes this patch as well. His base power has been decreased slightly and its base attack speed has been increased, while his attack timer reduction per level has been nerfed slightly. The damage and scaling of his Q has been reduced, and the modifier on the individual missiles in his Q has been changed so that the missiles after the first now do 20% damage instead of 15. The range on his Q has been increased slightly as well, and the magical power scaling has been increased from 75% to 100%. The base missing health damage on his Hellfire rounds has been decreased, but the modified crit damage has been buffed. The bonus scaling on his E has been reduced, but now has an 80% magical power scaling. That, combined with the increased magical power scaling on its Q, opens up the possibility for magical power rev builds. Lord help us all. Richter's base health has been decreased by 20, which is a step in the right direction. Personally, I think our resident warden needs a nerf or two on top of that. I think his silence lasts a little too long and should be reined in. Next up, we got some sev buffs. More health growth and base physical armor, as well as more damage on his Q. His dash cooldown has been brought down by a significant amount, 4 seconds level 1. I love Zub, and these changes make me super confident he'll be pretty top tier this patch. I wish there were some more changes to make him viable in the jungle, but one thing at a time. Maybe Omita doesn't want him to be a jungler, which is fine, but I would love a more in-depth understanding on their goals for certain heroes. Maybe a dev video targeting a few heroes that are in a weird spot, like Sev, Feng Mao, and Belica. And last but not least, Steel is getting a nerf this patch, finally. The damage on his shield has been cut in half at all ranks, and the damage on his stun has been lowered by 10. The stun duration itself has been decreased, as well as the range that you can hit it from. All these changes are super nice to see, but I still think until we see diminishing returns on CC, Steel will be an S tier pick. These nerfs will definitely make laning against him much more comfortable, but late game he'll still be an absolute menace. Up next we'll be talking about the item changes, but first it's time for a content creator shoutout. Yobuko is a predecessor Twitch streamer out of London, and he's been straight grinding content on YouTube. Watching his daily uploads makes me feel lazy, I need to step my game up. I've put his channels in the description, so go throw him a follow on Twitch and a sub on YouTube and, and show him some love. So without further ado, let's get into these item changes. We're going to start with the Brimstone and Fire Blossom changes, since let's be honest, that's what we were all looking for. Both Brimstone and Fire Blossom have had their base damage reduced while gaining additional damage versus monsters. This will make it feel less oppressive in lane, while keeping it a solid choice for junglers who may struggle clearing camps early without it. Fire Blossom is also increasing its damage versus immobilized targets, meaning it will definitely be viable for tank heroes with CC, but prevents it from being abused by someone like Countess. Another big change is that you can no longer purchase Brimstone while you own Fire Blossom, which is great. No more stacking burns. Like I said when I was talking about Kalari, Malady has also been nerfed with its demise scaling being reduced from 30% to 10%. I think this is fine since the item was a bit overtuned, but it might be too big a nerf for Malady to be worth rushing might be more of a mid-game item now, that you only get in situations when you're already ahead and sure you can stack it. A bug that gave Nightfall passive 10% Omnivamp instead of 5% has been fixed. Astral Catalyst has been given more power and less mana, which is a change that really annoys me. Like I said previously, with such little mana options in the first place, it just forces people more into Azure Core. Having an entire class of heroes dominated by one item isn't healthy for the game. Speaking of Azure Core, its scaling has increased from 3% max mana to 4%, so it's even more dominant in terms of mana itemization. Combustion has had its base damage decreased, but its scaling increased. Dreambinder is getting shifted a little bit, with the item providing less health but more power. I still think this item is lacking a solid identity, and I don't see it built very often. I'm not sure if this change will make it see more play, but I'm trying right now and I can't think of a hero I would use this with. Golem's Gift is getting a buff to its magical power, which is super neat. I think that this item is already pretty underrated if you can position yourself properly in fights, but if you can't, this item is still pretty trash. Definitely a niche pick, but the variable is how good you are as a player instead of the comp of the game. Magnify is getting some extra magical power, which is a nice buff. I still think this item is scarcely viable, 
because it only sometimes works on attack speed Howie or Bellica, which are fun builds but not nearly as impactful as straight up burst. I think giving Magnify more power helps smooth out the difference in impact between burst mage builds and attack speed mage builds, which opens the door for those more fun builds. Builds. Builds, builds, builds. Oathkeeper is also getting more magical power at the cost of health. Its passive scaling has been reduced however, so I think these changes are an overall nerf. Still just one of the more meh items in the game. Both Spellbreaker and Tainted Scepter have had very slight magical power buffs. These aren't drastic changes, but they do make me feel better about buying these more defensive items on mages. Feeling like you have to lose out on damage is never fun, even if the trade-offs are necessary to keep you alive, so this is great. Time Warp has had a huge rework, shifting it from a support-oriented item to a directly mage item. It now has 100 magical power, 15 physical armor, and 15 haste. Its two passives are Ferumancer, which grants power and armor after casting an ability stacking 5 times, and Chime, where in every 5 seconds all ability cooldowns are reduced by half a second. On paper, this item sounds completely broken. I will absolutely be using it on every mage, probably building it second or third. Taking away support items at this point in the game is super questionable, and it says in the notes Omita will be looking to improve support items in the next patch, but I still think this is a really short-sighted change. Dynamo's passive has had its scaling decrease from 5% to 4%, leaving the item almost exactly where it was. This item is still arguably the most broken item in the game now that Fire Blossom has been nerfed. Scaling or no scaling, the stats and the passive are just too much on one item. The last item to be changed is Raymond of Renewal. Its haste has been decreased from 15 to 10, and passive healing from damage taken has been increased. Its second passive synthesis has been reworked from an increase in all healing received to a new health regen equal to 1% of your bonus health. This is another solid change to nerf tank Countess, and I think its new passive synergizes great with heroes like Rampage and Sev who just stack bonus health. The last change of the patch is that tower's base damage has been increased, but its damage per level has been decreased, so hopefully this will nullify some of those early game dives that were getting pretty annoying. In terms of the state of the game, I think we're in a pretty good spot. Tank Countess was annoying and probably could have used a hotfix, but I still think Omita did a pretty good job handling it here in this patch. The player count continues to grow, and I'm super excited for the future. Thank you everyone for supporting the channel, but for now, that's it for me. Toodles.